Welcome to Window Talks with the director of the Central Valley Reentry Resource Center, Vicky Fuentes. 764 P Street Suite 28 in Fresno, California. To contact Vicky Fuentes, call 559 492 6302. And now, we present the director of the Central Valley Reentry Resource Center and your host for Window Talks, Vicky Fuentes. Welcome to Window Talks. I'm your host, Vicky Fuentes. And before I introduce my guest that's with me today, I'd like to give my shout outs to all the brothers and sisters at Corcoran State Prison, Corcoran Satis, Valley State Prison, Delano, Wasco, Avenal. You know, just know that we continue to pray for you. We continue to uh, stand in the gap for your breakthrough and for your miracle. And always know that Ventana TV is always going to support you and be with you as well. With that said, my guest has a very powerful testimony. He was also behind the walls for many, many years. Uh, God has touched his life, impacted his life, and he just comes with a very powerful testimony to share with you what God has done. Welcome, Brother Sammy. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you. You know, it's an honor to have you here and a privilege. I got to see your interview on YouTube, okay. you know, and just the history of where you've been, you know, where the enemy had you in bondage and where he's brought you to today. Yes. You know, brother, I'm not going to take, you know, too much time from you because you do have a lot to share. Okay. So just with that said, you know, let's talk about your testimony from the beginning. Okay. From the beginning, I went to, uh, I went to prison in, in the 70s. Uh, I picked up my beef in 1977. Uh, and finally, from fighting it, uh, I picked up a B for uh, murder, 187, first degree. Mm -hmm. And uh, for an organization that I belonged to uh, before I even went to prison. Uh, but you know, it's not important that of what I was because it's not about me. You know? Amen. It's about saving grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and He's the one that I want to give glory to. Amen. Uh, but yes, uh, I went to prison in the 70s. I got out in 2004. I was doing life for uh, uh, first degree murder and attempted murder. People ask me, how did I get out? Well, it wasn't because I was so good. Uh, it's by the grace of God. Amen. You know, it's by the grace of God that I'm out. It's by the grace of God that I continue to live, move, and have my being. Mm -hmm. You know, he, I got saved in 1985 while I was doing life sentence. The Lord used three things to get my attention because my heart was so hard. And uh, He used this riot in 1985 uh, while well, I was in Soledad. And uh, with the hardness of my heart, I couldn't even show emotion for my mom. You know, mm -hmm. that's how hard my heart was. But he used this riot just to get my attention. I've always been a partaker, uh, participant of things. But the Lord made me a spectator. Uh, I didn't understand that at first until after the fact, way after I got saved. Uh, he revealed this to me, he showed me. You know, I used to contribute everything to luck in the raya. You know, because uh, by all rights, I should have been dead years ago. Right. I was shot in the head by my enemy, uh, uh, MS sympathizer that uh, shot me and 
this I contributed to luck. Give me a right, yeah. You know. Then uh, when I entered into the prison system in uh, 79, with us when I got convicted uh, and sentenced, 79 finally went in and to serve out a, a life sentence for seven, seven, seven years to life. And uh, in, the, in the midst of all this, uh, I'm sorry, I'm going all over. That's you know. okay. Uh, but you know, in the midst of all this that I was going in, uh, doing, uh, before I even entered into the the prison system, my enemy, uh, he was the brother of uh, the guy I killed. He had gotten saved, and he sent some Christian people to visit me. Wow. And uh, from the time I caught the chain, well, when they came, they introduced themselves. They said, you're Sammy Dominguez. Mm -hmm. I said, yes. They said, you're not going to believe this, but uh, Danny sent us to see you. He says, you're his worst enemy. You killed his brother. And uh, he says, but since he's been out, He's come to acknowledge Christ as his Lord and Savior. And he would like to see you do the same in due time. And from that, from that point, they were coming to visit me once a week until I cut the chain and go to the pen. And, you know, they were sharing the gospel with me. And, you know, I have heard this gospel truth growing up, me and my little sister. Mm -hmm. uh, but I never responded to it. And that's uh, like a lot of us. We don't respond to these, uh, to the gospel right off. You know, we, God has a certain plan set out for us, but right. we go the other way. Mm -hmm. Our own rebellious nature our Adamic nature. Uh, and, you know, there's a proverb in 1929, it says, judgments are prepared for scorners, but stripes for the back of fools. Amen. Meaning, you know, we know the scorners <laughs> where, where they're going. Mm -hmm. But the back of fools is us, we have to go through it, get bumps on our head, going through the wall instead of going through the door or learning from someone's example. And uh, that's how I was. And so when, uh, as a re because of all this, I end up in going to prison. Well, becoming a member of a an organization, prison gang, before I even entered into prison. Mm -hmm. And even though I, I, uh, I continued to function. Uh, so in other words, when you began everything. Yes. You know, the streets, the violence, the drugs, you know, the gangs and everything else. You know, you caught your case. You know, you went behind the bars. But, you know, you said something very powerful. You know, and I know the viewers that are watching, it's, it's a very powerful statement because the brother that you shot yeah. sent in other brothers to make sure that you had your salvation. You know, and that is so powerful because a lot of people don't understand that it's God that sets the captive truly free. Amen. Even though we've committed the crime, we've taken somebody's life, no one's exempt to the Word of God. Who, who did Jesus hang out with? The murderer, the prostitute, you know, he hung out with the drug addict, the drug dealer. You know, he didn't hang out with the upper echelon. He hung out with the broken, Amen. you know, and what makes your story, you know, Brother Sammy, so powerful is that we have so many people, you know, that watch. The viewers that watch are, some are sitting behind bars, you know, listening to the testimony now and just thinking, man, this brother that he killed sent in, you know, the gospel, 
you know, the true brothers behind Christ to make sure that this man gets delivered and set free before you're even on your way to where your permanent resident is, according to man. And, you know, that that's just so powerful. So when you, you know, you got your sentencing, you went through, these brothers obviously were praying you, you know, praying for you, praying your way through, you know, being saved to making sure, you know, that when you cross over into that place that you were going to take the gospel of Jesus Christ with you. Did you continue to serve at that time? Yes, in 1985, uh, when the Lord came into my heart, mm -hmm. uh, it, was, it was at a time, uh, like I said, we had a riots just to get my attention. Mm -hmm. And uh, during the time we were locked down, uh, I get this letter from my ex-wife. I would got married when I was 21 right there in San Quentin. Get this letter from my ex-wife. And uh, we had been separate, what, well, divorced? about three years but nothing in between right but this letter she was sharing i must have read it about seven times but sharing the gospel with me wow something i've heard you know coming up but i continued in my way and in this letter she quotes in proverbs 3 5 and 6 trust in the lord with all your heart Lean not unto your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. Amen. The other verse he quoted was in Isaiah 41.10. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will help thee, yea, I will uphold thee in the right hand of my righteousness. Amen. He said he is with us. And Jeremiah 33, verse 3, Call unto me, and I'll answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. God's phone number. Amen. These three verses, I had this Bible there that them, them people, them Christian brother and sister had uh, gave me from my enemy. It had my name. I even tried to get rid of it before coming to the, going to the pen. Uh -huh. And the cop said, No. You keep your property. So that followed me. And I just had it tucked away. But that night, I pulled it out. And I'm looking up those verses. I didn't understand this, this Bible. Mm -hmm. When I tried to read it when I was in county jail, me and another carnal from the organization, he's trying to interpret it. And here we are. We're fighting, fighting murder beasts. You know? <laughs> <laughs> we're... And uh, he says, no, oh, my swag on. She comes and visits me and she shares with me. Mm -hmm. I might know a little bit about it. And so he, here he is trying to interpret it. And, and we're, pss, pss, pss. you know, we're in single cells right there uh, talking. And uh, finally, after we get convicted, get sentenced, we go to the pen. And uh, he uh, he goes one way, I go the other, and we we all get life sentences. And so uh, in this, I uh, as I go on from that from then to the from that night when I acknowledge this word. When I was in the streets, I didn't use drugs. I didn't start fixing heroin till I was in the pen. And that was seven years after I had been in, just to feel some kind of peace because I was so bitter, so full of hatred. Right. I had no peace at all. When I started fixing, I felt a peace, but that peace was only temporary. Right. Once the high was gone, so was the peace. And I was back to that bitter turmoil and so, but, the, but when I acknowledge this, this word, I felt the peace that I've never felt before. Amen. And that peace was fulfilling. And I wanted it, but I didn't know how to go about to get it. Right. And so he used this, Mike's wife, the riot, 
my ex-wife, and I had a family visit. After they, the cops came and swooped, did their whole big old search, uh, we got, I got rid of any pieces I had. That night when that riot happened, they took all my people. Wow. And so uh, word went out during this time, as uh, soon as we get off, you're dead. And uh, I mean, my mind was set ready, you know, I'm going to, it's either me or them, you know. Right. And it doesn't matter how many come at me, I'm going to take one with me. And I'm doing life. I didn't have nothing to lose. Right. And so during this time on, uh, on this lockdown, as long as I had a family visit scheduled, because I'm no longer married, so won't, wouldn't be with my wife, and be with my mom and my, my little brother. Right. And since I've been, been in prison, they had come to get saved. And so uh, I get a family visit, as long as nothing's pending on you, you're gonna be able to go. Right. So here I go to this family visit and it's like a big old load being taken off you, you know? Mm -hmm. And you know, breath of fresh air. I go and I never tell my family what's going on in there. And so we're happy to see each other and uh, it's my mother and my little brother. He's about seven, eight years old at the time. And uh, my little brother says, Brother, Jesus loves you. Oh, amen. And I says, Okay, me oh, that's, that's all good. But let me go over here, talk to mom, you know, I'm trying to shake him. <laughs> mm -hmm. And, you know, I've always listened out of respect, mm -hmm. you know. And so, when my mom, she's cooking, and, and she tells me during this time, she said, I wasn't going to come. At this time, she starts crying. I says, why? And she says, but I had to tell you. Tell me what? And she says, uh, went to the doctors, and they ran tests on me. They found traces of cancer. And I already lost everything out there, my wife and everything else. And, and here, the only thing registering is I'm going to lose my mom. Right. And so uh, in this, she says, but don't worry, mijo. I'm going to, I'm going to be with the Lord. Mm -hmm. I see a confidence in her, you know? Right. That's only the strength of the Lord at that time. Amen. But my heart is so hard, I couldn't even show emotion for her. Mm -hmm. And after, after a while, I just get up because she's like this. It's okay, you know, let it out. But my heart is so hard, I can't right. show emotion. So I get up, I go to, to the bathroom, and I don't even turn on the light. I'm standing right in the darkness. And those three verses just come. And that verse, trust in the Lord with all your heart. And I'm standing there. I said, I've never trusted in nobody. But you asked me to trust in you. Amen. At that point, I said, I thought I was talking to God. Mm -hmm. And he says, I says, but I can't deny the peace that I felt. I wanted. And I asked him to come into my heart at that moment. And the peace, man, I just felt a, a fulfilling peace. 
So it was through the tragedy of the news that your mom brought you, that brought you to Christ at that time? During that time, yeah, and everything that was going on, because mm -hmm. he had my attention. Amen. And you know, just with the viewers that are watching, you know, you mentioned you ha had a life sentence. Yeah. You know, I know their number one question watching this is, what did God do and how did he move, you know, to get you out of that situation? Well, after our family visit, when I came out of the bathroom, then and only then was I able to show emotion. Amen. I went, comforted my mom, and I thought everything was going to be good. I didn't tell her, but it just took place either. Right. And so I go back, and here I'm, I got to face all this hatred, you know? Mm -hmm. I walk back into this darkness, and you can just feel the tension. And I go back, and I'm still single cell, because my cellie got rolled up that night and still didn't have a cellie. And so I pull out that Bible, and I keep on reading it. I couldn't get enough of it. Mm -hmm. I was understanding it. You right. Know? And I kept reading, and then after a while, uh, as Time went on, months into this lockdown, they start uh, appointing communicators to come out to represent their people. So, because I had been there all these years, and uh, that was a stable influence there, shot caller. Mm -hmm. they, uh, they pulled me out to be the Norteño uh, representative there, because of the organization I belonged to, my past ties as an NF member, uh, I come out and uh, I start, well, before I even come out, I, had, I was talking to God all this time. Right. I says, you know what, I got to go deal with. And I had, I had broke down a piece, I had a piece ready, and, but uh, that, that night when they pulled me out as a communicator, I didn't take it. And so when I came out, I go straight to these, uh, well, I was going to my, my people to go talk to them, but I ended up going straight to the shot callers from the uh, Sureños. I told them, this is a, a wire I got. I can take it one or two ways. You either send it out to get me paranoid, but I'm gonna tell you, you don't want to get me paranoid. Because if you do, I'm going to take one of you with me, mm -hmm. you know, and it don't matter who. I have nothing to lose. I'm doing all day. And this is hey, Sam, we know you weren't there then, you know, so it's okay. You know, don't trip. And I said, just because you're telling me that, don't mean I'm going to drop my guard. Right. Just remember what I'm telling you. And so I go to this other shot caller, and word for word verbatim tells me the same thing. So I come away from there, and I'm processing this when I get back, and everything was taking place. And I get with my people, you know, tell them what's going on, and they say, don't trip, we're, you know, we got your back. Mm -hmm. So I go back to my cell and processing all this and talking to, to the Lord. And that's what I got to deal with. And so as we started coming out of this lockdown, real controlled, just one or two, two, three wings at a time, uh, one of my homeboys comes, hey, Sam, I got some stuff, you know? I said, we'll go half and half, mm -hmm. heroin, you know? And I, I said, yeah, okay, cool. And so, yeah, I'll get with you later. And so when I come out, uh, when my carnalis tells me that touchdown, when are you coming back to the familia? When do you need patras? Mm -hmm. And uh, he said, think about it. And I said, okay. So I got an opportunity. I jump on the phone 
on the yard. First one I called my mom. I talked to her and she says, Mijo, I went to the doctors and they couldn't find no trace of the cancer in me. Oh, hallelujah. I said, praise God. She said, what? This is the first time she ever heard me say anything like that. Mm -hmm. I said, praise God. Mm -hmm. Yes, this is what he's done. She says, this is, I've been praying for that all these years. I said, well, praise God. It's all about serving him now. And you know, Sammy, mm -hmm. um, you know, for the viewers watching, you know, we're going to uh, do a part two of, of Sammy's uh, testimony because it's so powerful, you know, and, uh, and stay tuned for part two. But what I do want to say for the viewers that are watching is, you know, testimonies like Sammy is very powerful because they're true, they're tangible. Many of you, you know, behind the walls just need a tangible testimony. You need something to hang on to because maybe you came out of, you know, gang violence and you caught a case and you got a life sentence. You got maybe 20, 30, 40 years, you know, where you're down. Maybe some of you are 10 to 20 down. You, nothing's impossible with God, you know, and stay tuned for that part too because Sammy will explain, you know, how God moved in his life, you know, to set the captive free even on a full life sentence. You know, so with that said, I thank the faithful viewers for always watching Window Talks. Just know that we continue to pray for you. You know, we are always, you know, standing in the gap for your miracle. Thank you for watching. See you soon. This has been Window Talks with the director of the Central Valley Reentry Resource Center, Vicky Fuentes. To contact Vicky Fuentes, call 559-492-6302.